Welcome back everyone to another Minecraft video with myself and the Nether Villagers. Today we're going to be actually talking about the Nether with these villagers, and actually not this one. And we're going to be talking about how to find the Bastions, which are quite rare or fairly rare structures to find. But either way, there are still some things that you could know about them, and especially about how to explore them, because they are probably, I would say, one of the most dangerous, if not the most dangerous structure to actually explore. So first of all, what biomes do these spawn in? Now the answer is quite simple. All biomes but the basalt deltas. The basalt deltas, by the way, look like this. And thank god they don't spawn in here because those are like nasty to actually traverse. Like imagine going across this in survival with the magma, the lava. The magma cubes come from nowhere and bash you in. Now luckily I have actually found a bastion using the locate command. Which you probably shouldn't be using if you want to have a good survival world. But remember, this is a random seed. Now let me change into spectator. But at the same time, bastions do spawn fairly frequently. So they're not, not like too, too rare. If you keep exploring, then you should be able to find them. So for example, I recommend exploring over the large lava lakes or in biomes such as, you know, the soul sand valley, the nether wastes. The forests might be a bit harder to traverse just because there isn't really much visibility there. And this was harder to go through all the trees, trees, not the trees, <laughs> the trees. But yeah, so I would recommend going through the Soul Sand Valley and the Nether Ways just because it's easier to see, first of all, and also to travel quite quickly. So let's actually see what a bastion looks like. Now, luckily, this is actually probably the best type of bastion, so it has the most stuff. Now, I've prepared here, obviously, because I've prepared my videos, a chest with the things that you need to know, uh, need to have, rather for exploring a bastion. Now this is literally the bare minimum. So what do you need? A bow, arrows, shield, loads and loads of blocks and a sword. Now why no armor you might ask? Well quite simple, you don't actually want to get hit by them. So for example, I mean essentially piglins here would either attack you if you aren't wearing any gold armor. Obviously I'm in creative so they're fine with me. Or if you open the chest. Now it does actually, like even if you put the chest down, they will still get quite annoyed at it, uh, with it, and attack you. But also, another side note is if you also mine their gilded blackstone or any gold blocks, as in my gold blocks, I think I mean the gold blocks over there, but also the gold ore for the nuggets that you actually find in the nether, but they'll also get quite angry with you if you do that. So, basically you just want to be very careful of your surroundings around them. And that's where you get your shield and your sword and your bows, just because you want to kill those piglins really because you can't really rely on them being all friendly to you. Now good thing is they do actually die from fire unlike many nether mobs. So you can use that to your advantage. You can, as you can see down here, just push them into the lava. We'll explore this bit later. So yeah. Now why do you need the bow you may ask? Well there is one huge reason why you need the bow and that is the piglin brute. Let me try and spawn one in. The piglin brute is an absolutely nasty, nasty mob to come across. Now, let me just show you how tough he is. Netherite sword, obviously not my super sword, but my netherite sword. Look how many hits he takes. Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven hits with a netherite sword. So you do not really want to be facing him one on one. Especially because of his axe, he can go straight through your shield and then you really be stuck. So yeah, just bow him from a long range. Preferably like you know with a power bow, but literally any kind of bow would do. So how do you explore the bastions? Well, systematically to make sure you don't really miss anything. Now the bastions are a great source of loot. You can get netherites from it, you can get other things, you can get soul speed, books, which you can't get really any other way apart from bartering, and that's a low chance anyway. And you can get um loads of other features as well. So you can see here we have bone blocks, we have glowstone which is far easy, far easier to access than normally out in the nether waste or wherever, where it's up in the roof, so over a large lava pool and you're like, well, what can I do now? You also get loads and loads of gold, so for example here you can see all these gold blocks, which are very nice. Gold blocks are very useful, especially in this update, with the things that you can do with them, so that's quite cool. Now, in some bastions like this one, you can even get the magma cube spawn. Actually, not in this one, whoops. Let's talk about the chest first. So, as you can see, loads and loads of gold. But look at some of the loot. A mending diamond helmet. Obviously, you know, the durability has went down, but that's fine. You have mending on it. 
and then that's just normal diamond chest plates, normal diamond boots, and loads and loads of gold. So that's seven blocks of gold in that one chest. And look, diamond, gold, and netherite ingots. Wow, that's quite good as well. Loads of nether quartz, spectral arrows, which are loads and loads of fun, and so on. But here, look at this magma cube spawner. This is the only instance where it actually appears in the game. So if you want a nice magma cube farm, then simply find one of these bastions, and it has to be this type of bastion, the different types of bastions, but it has to be this type of bastion, and, you know, construct a farm around it. I don't really know how you would do it, um, but I'm sure, you know, you people are smart enough out there, and you can construct a nice automatic farm, where you just sit and chill there for a bit, and get loads and loads of magma cream. So, essentially, the main point is really for exploring bastions is, Make sure you're systematic, make sure you block out loads of stuff, make sure you don't engage the piglins fairly, so for example, I don't know, you see this piglin here, you know, block him out here and then just keep whacking him with your sword. Do that because, you know, they're piglins, they will actually kill you if you give them the chance. And be careful, especially of the brutes. My personal tip is use the subtitles in the bottom right. I believe you go to options and then accessibility settings and then show subtitles here. Because essentially, if you hear or you see in the subtitles in the bottom right, piglin snorts or steps, etc., then you're fine, really. I mean, you can easily take on a piglin 101. One. If you see piglin brutes, on the other hand, it's time to get your bow ready, get your blocks ready, or get your running boots ready. So, yeah, thank you for watching. There's really much more to Bastions apart from just making sure you're vigilant and you use the blocks properly. You might also want a fire resistance potion if you're especially prone to falling into lava, like I am. But yeah, thank you for watching, hope you enjoy, and make sure you share, especially if you found this useful, and see you later. Goodbye.